when did you get your first big check? <laughs> and I'm talking about that life changing check. So you're talking about not a producer fee check. You're talking about like a the publishing publishing something with you. I, I don't something know when I, you when, when you got the check, you had to stop, and you had to think to yourself, I'm a kid from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would be holding a piece of paper with this many zeros on it and my name. When, who, when, where did that check, check come I, into play? I think that happened when I did my deal with Tommy Matola. So, so when that's I did, Jennifer Lopez? I, 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 I had, yeah, so what happened was I had, did, I had a publishing deal when I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a, a, a beautiful deal. Check was lovely or whatever. Um, I was able to do things for my parents that, you know, I wanted to do, but I didn't look at that as like, oh, that changed my life. It changed our circumstance. Correct. It changed our circumstance. Um, but when Tommy Matola, um, when I met with him to do a deal with Sony and he offered me a, a deal, that was the deal that I think that was the check that made me say, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wow, this is this this is this hard work really done paid off. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this is crazy. That would just stop you in your tracks for a second. Yeah, yeah it definitely stopped me in my tracks and 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 you know and and hey, but you know what? I can say I can say it was worth it. Right? For what definitely was worth it. For them, it was worth it, meaning the check that they gave was worth it. Mm -hmm. or, I, or I could also say maybe I undervalue myself. Really? Well, there's two ways to look as, at as, it. As big as, as big as that check was. Yeah, because there's two ways to look at it, right? When you get those big checks, the checks are so big, that, that check is so big, you didn't take into account the, what the real value is. No one really did a valuation. You didn't treat it like a business and do a proper valuation. If I would have been who I am now and I would have did a proper valuation, that check should have been probably three or four times bigger than what it was. Wow. Technically. wow. They might have they might have barked at him like, nah, we're not de definitely doing that. But based off the success of Jennifer Lopez, if you have my love, based off the success of Destiny's Child Say My Name, based off the success of Rock My World by Michael Jackson then I could argue that that check should have been much bigger. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, our, I know what those billings look like for those those records. I know what those records sold and all that. But I never, I, I never get upset at that part because that's not who I am. I appreciate it. I look at everything as a blessing. I'm it's like, in that, time, in that time of my life, that was a huge blessing. That was a huge opportunity to help push my career further. And another thing, another thing I will say, I'm going to go back to this. After that check, after that check, I ain't celebrate. Because that's, it, that, okay, you, I think you're going where, where I want to take you. I, I'm, what I'm saying so, is I could have celebrated. Excuse me? I'm, what I'm saying is people that get checks like that, mm -hmm. they, they might go to an island for like two weeks to a month and relax. I've always had a mentality, as soon as I get a check, I'm working harder. I still have the same. Where, where does exact, that come from? I have the oh, same. This is exact something thing. with so many people. We watch it with with professional athletes. They win a championship. They finally get that belt that they've been working for, and they celebrate. How did you not do what so many musicians, artists, songwriters do? Which is go get high, binge out somewhere, lose your mind, get caught up with fifty thousand women. How did you stay so focused? Is that, you know, and you keep mentioning your dad in this interview. Is it your upbringing from your parents? Is it just you were just that extremely motivated? Like, where does this self-discipline come from? And please break it down because somebody is on the verge of getting that life-changing check. And if you can give them any advice to keep them focused, please do. Yeah, I think... Um a couple of things definitely the definitely the upbringing makes the, the the huge difference it made the difference in my life right it definitely it definitely made the difference in having that knowing where that where that cornerstone was in my life and knowing what that meant and knowing what to turn to um and knowing that you know to to 
do things in the right way, tithe and all those different things. You, so you do tithe? Oh, absolutely, 100%. Oh, I'm so happy you said that. Oh, I'm so happy you said that. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, 100%. Um, if I had to say that I had an inch of fear in those moments, the fear would be the fear to lose. It was, it was, never, a, it, it was never a fear a doubt in, in, in my music. It was never a fear of doubt in my music. The fear would doubt is the fear would be if I, if I celebrated too long and did that, then someone else would come up and creep up and take what I've been working so hard for. That would be the fear. So you, my idea. You were worried about protecting your spot. There you go. You so worked like, so hard to get there. I'm, I'm in the number one spot right now. I cannot take my foot off the gas for a second because if I do, there is now there's another young, hungry Rodney Jerkins right behind me. And if, if he get that sec if he catch me slipping for a second, now he got the number one spot. I've seen it happen to producers. I won't name names, but I've li I've seen it happen to songwriters. Where I've literally had this conversation with a songwriter one time who was hot as fire, like literally running the game. And I literally and, and then that writer said um, he wanted to be an artist. And I said, don't do it. Now's not the time. Don't do it. And nah, 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 I just got my deals. I was like, nah, you want fires right? Keep keep pushing on the writing side. And as soon as he went in the studio to focus on his artistry, another writer started working with all those artists that he was just working on. And it flipped. So I've always had that thing in the back of my mind, like someone's always coming for the spot. Someone's always coming for the title. So I, I love boxing. I love sports. So I always use analogies of boxing. Like, they always going to be someone training in the gym even harder than you are. Mm -hmm. You think you're training harder. And if you're celebrating, you're definitely not train, training harder. So somebody's going to come up on you. So you got to work even harder to protect that spot and evolve and keep it pushing. So that's where I think me, my thing has always been that. And it still kind of is that, like, yo, if I get something, a check or something that that um, is great and and that does does well for myself and my family, then I need to work harder. You know what I mean? I never forget Jimmy Iovine told me this one time. Jimmy Iovine said I, I I had um I had told Jimmy I had did a deal with with Jimmy and I had I was renting a house and I and he says how's you know how are you going? I said oh I just I, I got this crib that I'm renting now. He said, oh, yes, house music. I love it. I love house music. He said it to me. And I looked at him and I said, huh? He goes, I love when producers get a house. When they get a house, they got to work harder to pay that house, pay off that house. He said, so I love house music. That's what the way he called, he called it house music. Got you. Yeah, because you, because you don't want to leave as you grow. As you grow, you don't want to you don't want to get evicted from the house you're in. You don't want to leave the house that you that you got your family in. You know what I mean? You want to keep growing. So I always look at that the same way, man. I'm like, man, it's time to it's time to tear this down. It's time to keep going. Like it ain't no time to, to relax right now. We're not in relax season. You know what I mean? And so I encourage young producers, like I tell them all the time, man, you got it. You just gotta keep going. Don't stop until you find it. Keep going. Keep looking. You won't, it's going, you won't catch that sound. You won't catch that wave, but you got to go after it. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.